Chapter 32 So Aaron Sama has returned back. Rem said, voice filled with joy as she stared at the man that sitting in his bed, Rem is glad to see this. The blonde furrowed his eyebrow and give her look, glad to be back. He nodded, but I never thought you would be so happy about it. Giving yesterday the blue oni pampering and practically treat him like her personal doll, he expect her to be slight disappointed. She even bring breakfast to his room instead calling him or wake him up like usual, no doubt she want to feed him again. Rem smiled to the blonde, while Rem do like Aaron Sama in his child form, but the one that Rem love is the Aaron Sama that sit before Remington. The blonde eyes widened at the sudden confession, his cheeks instantly reddened and he gaped at the Oni for a moment. W.L. That. That. He stuttered, trying to form coherent words, that was. Very sweet of you. He stammered out and turned his face away from her immediately, not wanting the maid to see his flustered face any further. Rem let out giggle, it sounded so melodic, thank you Aaron Sama. Rem said. The blonde merely grunted and groaned internally. How the hell he should respond to that blatant confession? Seriously. It come from nowhere. And frankly, he would be lying if he said that his heart not skip a beat when hearing them. Having beautiful girl declare her love to you in such manner will have that effect after all. Ah, since Aaron Sama's body has returned, then shall Rem assume Aaron Sama appetite also did? Rem asked. Aaron blinked and stared down at his food, he noticed they are not as much as usual. Probably because she thought he would still remain as child and thus can't eat a lot. Yeah, I can do with extra portion. He answered. Then Rem shall go and take more food. Rem replied happily, please wait for a moment. After saying that the blue oni gives small bow before leaving from the room. Aaron stare at where the maid moment ago before chomping his breakfast inside. This day just get started and he already get flustered like this. There's still many things he need to solve and finish today, starting from talking with Amelia, and everyone, might as well finished it, about the coming threat, mulling over what he should do about Beatrice and Ram. He groaned internally as his mind wandering to the pink oni while chewing piece of meat. Rem had asked him to help her, albeit it was indirect, and truthfully she didn't need to. Aaron would gladly help Ram if he could, however the thing is, he didn't know what to say to her, let alone knowing just what make her bothered in very first place. Oh, make no mistake he have general idea what is it, highly possible it was that damn clown, again, even when he not hear that ancient leech still able to make his life harder somehow, who responsible for making Ram. Like this. I should ask him yesterday before he leaving about Ram, but I was too bothered by the revelation of Beatrice's nature, damn that leech. He cursed the magician inwardly, he will punch him in face next time they meet. And not just making proper story that everyone would believe, he also need to test his new ability as well. Irisville's magecraft can be said almost top tier, true it was limited in a sense but there's no doubt that it still will be powerful. Not to mention if he could learn magic of re, zero verse then it will be very useful. He remembered just how easy and simple it sounded, if you have enough power and right elements aptitude then you can become powerful with ease. But Irisville is not specialized in elemental magecraft, she is more into alchemy. He thought as he recall how the homunculus fought against Kyrie in Forest and Ilya battle with Rin in Unlimited Blade works. The strings bird that they create is indeed powerful as each of them seems capable to launch laser-like attack that have equal force with Grenade, they also durable enough and could be altered easily, becoming blade or something like that. But he never seen her using elemental magecraft. In FGO game when she attacking perhaps but. As far he recall her elemental attack she only uses were fire and light. Well, it doesn't matter truthfully. While true it was cool and will be very beneficial to be powerful caster like Medea, Paracelsus, or Merlin but he doesn't need that much of offensive power in first place. Irisville is supportive servant, and very good one in lore despite the game doesn't give her very much credit. She capable to create workshop like Medea and her specialization in healing magecraft is as good as the Witch of Betrayal herself. And then there's her noble phantasm. The Holy Grail. It might be not the almighty wish-granting device, but it capable to enact miracle. Bringing the dead back to live, restoring the old back to youth, and purifying people and the damaged land from all kind of curse and negative effect that influencing them. A healing item in such caliber is something that can't just be brushed. In future, he's sure it will come to handy, giving his luck and adventure there will be time noble phantasm with such power to be needed. Not to mention the item construction ability, he might not capable to create mystic code that devastating but something that rivaling Avalon? That was possible. Granted it surely won't be as potent as the real one, 
but one or two level below the famous sheath or producing similar effect? It is clearly not impossible. Though it leave one question. How the heck I'm going to build that? He asked no one internally while sweat dropping as he chomp his food. He know how magecraft work, yes, thanks to type moon being very detailed how their spell supposed to work. He might still not trying it but he's sure he could produce some fire or light just like Irisfield did it in FGO. However same thing can't be said to creating something that entirely new is another matter. Not to mention the mystic code he would build is using type moon's magic theory. Would that even work in this world? I mean as far I recall, magecraft work in type moon because each type have their own system, something that connected to the root and. No, no, it could work. His existence is proof that root is also exist in this world. Somehow, this ReZero universe still connected to Root, that is the only explanation why he could possess Saber's power. It kinda makes sense seeing Root is exist outside from boundary of time and space itself but he doubt it actually exist in DCU, MCU, or things like that. And if this world connected to Root as well, then Magecraft could work. He just need to build new, system, somehow, and to do that, he need to build workshop. How the hell he build one though? Maybe I can get clue by studying books in here. He thought with sigh. Perhaps he could make something that contain mixture of both universe magic. It could work, right? Maybe he could even create better system and more powerful magic in the end. Knowing his luck, chance that happen was close to zero but hey. A man can hope, right? I could train magic later, for now it will be better to tell the others about the coming anomaly first. He thought with nod. That seems the best thing to do for now. He also could think about Beatrice and Ram problem later, but this matter cannot wait. The door of his room slowly opened, revealing Rem who pushing trolley filled with food. Aaron Sama, Rem has returned. He immediately perked up, his eyes gleaming with new light as the smell of food invade his nose. Okay, the story can wait too, first he is hungry and yesterday he barely eat anything. He will make sure to work hard for what he left. Later. I'm glad you returned to normal Aaron. Amelia beamed, face showing mixture of joy and relief. Your behavior yesterday spoke otherwise. Aaron thought flatly as he recalled how Amelia cuddled him but outside he merely smile and nod, well I'm glad I also returned to normal. He said before sighing, really, yesterday was a mess. Eh, I won't mind if you stay in that form for one or two days more. Puck commented while stretching lazily in table. Betty too, I suppose. Beatrice agreed, you are less annoying in that form. The blonde gives small glare to the duo spirits but refrained from said anything as he know it won't do any good. Briefly he glanced at Ram to see how she react to this, unsurprisingly she seems didn't care much about his condition that returned to normal. It's only an hour after he finish his breakfast that he tell Ram to call everyone. Normally Beatrice or Ram won't even bother to come but he told the blue haired maid that this is important matter, related not just to him but also possibly everyone. So here they are. Gathered in living room, naturally Rem and Ram were standing like proper maid while Beatrice, Amelia, Puck and Aaron the one that's sitting. So you wouldn't turn back to your child form anymore in future? Amelia asked. He turned to her and quirked his eyebrow. That was good question, would he return to that form when he install another class card? He only need to think about that for few seconds before he sighing. I don't know, but knowing my luck. Perhaps. He sighed, remember what I said about I have weapons or something that's similar like Excalibur to me? He asked and they all nodded, like Excalibur, those weapons are bonded to me and naturally I supposed to be able to use them like Excalibur. He paused in here, letting the effect and implication of his words to sink before continuing, however, ever since I'm summoned to this land, I can't use them. For some reason they all locked away. Puck tilted his head slightly, and what kind of weapons you have in your arsenal other than your sword? He asked curiously. Not all of them weapons, one item that I just managed to get back is something that work more like a healing spell. Aaron paused in middle of speaking and put hand to his lips in contemplating manner, very advanced and powerful healing spell. He corrected as he recall Irisville's noble phantasm, granted I still can't use it now without repercussion due to just getting it back, but I will in future. Not long, perhaps before the king of Gustico come or sooner even. Summoned. Beatrice noted, her eyebrow quirking, what is that supposed to mean? Aaron stay silent for a moment, his eyes staring at the petite spirit before shifting to everyone in the room, lingering to each of them, then his gaze fell to Amelia. Remember what I said about me coming here? He asked. You are illegal emigrant. Amelia answered, 
Her mind drifted back to the day when Aaron had breakfast with her the first day he come to the manor. Then she frowned when something clicked in her mind that was a lie. She stated. He's lying to her about his status. He is not just simply an illegal emigrant, he is far more than that. Technically, no. I am indeed a legal emigrant, I did not belong to this country and come here in a legal manner. Aaron answered back, but if you put it in certain way, yes, I am not being entirely truthful to you. He accepted the statement with sigh, and at that time, I was quite having hard time to trust people in this manner. He said to the half-elf, and no, I don't mean you, I trust you, it was Roswell, Ram and Rem I'm talking about. He added hastily when the silver-haired girl looked hurt for a moment. Then he turned to Rem and Ram, no offense to you two, both of you are working for Roswell after all. Rem take no offense from that. Rem replied nonchalantly, Rem also skeptical and doesn't trust Aaron Sama in the beginning after all. Ram doesn't make any comment, the pink-haired maid only dipped her head a bit in acceptance of the blonde's comment. Well. Amelia scrunched her face. While true it kinda make her upset that Aaron not that truthful to her but it can't be blamed. She was also very skeptical to Roswell when he come to her forest after all, that man's style was too outrageous. Had it was not for Puck, she wouldn't believe in him too. There's still one thing that bother her. What do you mean by being summoned? She asked what Beatrice asked once again. I'm getting to that. Aaron responded, and it exactly like what I said. My presence in this world, it is because I was summoned. Ichi closed his eyes briefly as he recall his first appearance in this world. He was attending cosplay show, him, Nathania, Jason, Handy and Jenny, then when he crossed that auditorium door to watch the show he suddenly found himself in this world, and truthfully, I don't know how and why I was summoned to this world. You don't know? Puck asked in bewilderment, how can you doesn't know the reason you being summoned? Ignoring that part, to begin with I don't even know who summoned me. Aaron remarked dully before he sighed, appear to be also in same distress as Puck, as far I know, I was just minding my own business and then I found myself in this world. At least he can tell them the truth about that part. That was one of the honest thing that beneficial for him, it would explain why he was so hesitate to tell his background before meeting Amelia, he was basically also confused how he arrive in here after all. Any sign or clue who summon you to this place? Amelia asked. Nothing. I tried to think about it but nothing come to mind. Aaron stated. That was lie, there one person that probably responsible for this, the same person who literally holding his heart. He didn't speak about her for obvious reason, that was something that will open another can of worms. Let it be shut off and closed for now. So Aaron Sama come here unwillingly? Rem asked. Pretty much so. He confirmed with nod. He saw the blue-haired Oni's eyes briefly narrowed then they widened as if realization dawned to her. Those eyes shifted to Amelia's direction for a second before returning to him, and when they did, Aaron can see their deep emotions in there, a mixture of sadness, sympathy, and yet also small happiness. She know. She realize what is the meaning of his presence in here. And she is sad for him, but at same time she is also happy that he is here with them. Oh Aaron. Amelia let out sounds of sympathy to him and the blonde turned his gaze to her, studying the half-elf. Unlike Rem, Amelia didn't get it, she didn't manage to put the puzzle together. In fact save for Rem, no one seems get what he tried to imply. Perhaps it is because the lack of information or it was too subtle but whichever it is doesn't matter. They will realize it in future, it is just matter of time after all, and seeing Amelia's growth rate, perhaps it will be sooner than the blonde expected. As interesting is this, Betty failed to see why you call Betty to be here as well. Beatrice stated while crossing her arms, Betty doesn't care about the reason why you here and as far Betty know it doesn't include Betty in any way, I suppose. You're right about that. Aaron responded, it doesn't have connection to you, but what going to come soon, it will. Puck's blue eyes narrowed slightly, the feline-like spirit sensed the sudden shift of the man's mood and it put him on alert as well, what do you mean? He asked. To begin with, my world. You can say there are many good things from where I come from, most of you had seen through my cell phone how the city and the people in there seem so peaceful. Aaron said as he waved his cell phone as a gesture and placed it on table, however, what you must know is, that peaceful and beautiful world is not achieved easily, and there also darker side of my world that would make people in here puke at their mere sight. Like that. Nuclear bomb. Amelia asked as she remembered the mentioned weapon. I'm surprised you remember that. How could I not? A weapon that capable to kill thousands and possibly million in instant, no one will forget about that. Point. 
Aaron chuckled, yeah, like nuclear bomb, to you whom doesn't know, let's just say it is like pack of fire stone, except it explosive force is capable to wipe out city at capital size and then spread poison to its surrounding, and if not treated it could damage the whole world. He explained to Beatrice and Ram who wasn't there when he talked about the bomb. And exactly for what reason you made that kind of weapon? Beatrice asked in bewilderment. It act more like a leash than weapon to be honest. Aaron repeated what he said during his first explanation about the weapon, people are stupid, unfortunately that occur to those that dwell in my world as well and the thing is, people that stupid could do something very dangerous. His eyes went dull for a moment as he recalled one particular stupidity in his world, like existent of Nazi. Seriously, why oh why? Just why and how that could happen? And to stop that, people need leash, they need something to make sure they need to treat power with careful, lest they dooming the entire world. Despite sound so awfully stupid Betty found it was, unfortunately is wise act in certain ways, I suppose. Beatrice remarked while wrinkling her nose in disdain at the idea. That was not the worst thing we have truthfully. He replied, but it is the most common we have and people could make. Giving in history there many country that start to create nuclear after America bombard Japan because how powerful it is. He don't know how to create the mass destruction weapon, but Aaron believed that most country in the world already can create one their own with the current technology. And while true that nuclear is bad, that actually not the worst thing too. Aaron won't be surprised if they have some kind of biological weapon that would turn people into pseudo-zombie or something like that, it just never revealed to the world. A weapon at that scale, yet it is not the worst. Amelia asked with utterly horrified voice. He come from where they're being that considered as gods in our world, we are. Puck snorted, of course it is not the worst. That make Aaron internally blinked, the response was not expected but he immediately held his mouth when he about to rebuke it. That was technically not wrong, he is in world that's supposed to be anime, which mean Tepe can be said as their divine figure since the man is their creator. Let everyone in here create their own assumption, it will be more effective and give him reason if he was questioned. Like Puck said there. He said, quickly responding and calm himself so Puck did not detect his emotion moment ago, the weapon is bad, but there are many things that worse than them, the individual that live in there is mainly the reason why it was created in very first place. Aaron, where are you going with this? Amelia asked to the point, she didn't get it why he explaining these things once again. She have some guess but she hope it was wrong, don't tell me. Aaron take deep breath, here goes the bomb, apparently I'm not the only one who summoned to this world. That news immediately put everyone on alert. Even Beatrice and Ram who doesn't look care also show concerned and wary expression after hearing that. You are not. Amelia whispered, Aaron, are you telling me there? There's someone that carry blood of divine entity like you arrive? She asked in shock. Dreig is not divine entity. Aaron corrected her, as for your question. Well, not someone, but more like their belonging. Their belonging? Puck asked, he become more interested and serious now. This was really unexpected news, and it works in good and bad way, but Puck is not optimism enough to believe those that following Aaron's footsteps have good intention. Not with how grave his emotion right now. Like Excalibur for example. Aaron answered, however thing is, in my world, while death still have grasp in our life, but it wasn't that simple. He started to explain, those that powerful and strong enough, sometime have left part of their souls in their belonging. Part of their soul. Amelia whispered in shock. No, no, sorry, I put it in wrong way. It wasn't their souls, but more like their essence. Aaron said as he recalled the knowledge about heroic spirit, those people that extraordinary and so powerful left part of their essence, similar like lesser spirit. He stated, but unlike lesser spirit, under right circumstance, these essence could possess or influence those that wield them. That. That wasn't good thing, wasn't it? Rem asked. In some way, perhaps it was, in some, not at all. He answered, good because most of those that ascended is actually good people, so they were attend to be more helpful to others, and some of those people is actually full with wisdom and very intelligence. He recalled the knowledge of Da Vinci, the robot's army of Thomas Edison, and intellectual magus like Paracelsus, but few of them aren't good people. Of course. Puck exclaimed with twitching eyes, of freaking course. Why I should expect no less when it related to you. Hey. I'm not responsible for this you know, and I also don't like it. Aaron defended himself with annoyed voice, back to the track, those that aren't good people is obviously bad news, and they are powerful, enough to at least defeat Hakugiai in combat by themselves. That actually not make things any better. 
as strong as Hakugiai. Amelia murmured in mixture of dread and shock. Well, some, and it only some mind you, might be not, but most of them does. Example of this is. He then searching his brain for that particular people and find an idea when his eyes fall to the twin maid that stood no far from his position, for example, the Oni from my world. Oni. Rem asked, in curious and interest at their race that mentioned. Even Ram also visibly reacted, there's Oni from where Aaron Sama come from. Yes. He nodded, truthfully, I don't know how Oni behave in this world but mine is. Vicious. He frowned and scrunched his brain further, trying to dig information that he learned about Oni from FGO during the Onigashima raid. It's still not come out in NA version when he landed in here but sure as hell already did in Japanese, and his friend already tell the tale about them. And he also know of it because of particular Oni that loved by many people due to thinking of her as good waifu and her having smooth and lustrous voice, and he's not excluded of them. For one, they are often raiding and pillaging village, killing people, be it demi-human or human, and they also absurdly strong. Eren's mind wander to two Oni that stand out, Ibaraki Duji and Shuten Duji is the worst example of them. Ibaraki? Ram is the one who spoke, for the first time ever since they start this discussion, what a ugly and barbarian name. She stated with wrinkled nose. She behaved like one too, Ibaraki is very infamous for her temper and hellish flame. Eren replied, and she is strong, absurdly strong. Capable to killing many mighty heroes and destroy thousands of soldiers with only group of Oni, she is dubbed as the Raging Oni. Hakugiai would be as good as food to her if she meet it. An Oni that have such level of power exist in there. Rem muttered with mixture of awe and fear. Oni is strong, she know it, she is one herself after all. However Hakugiai is by any mean not weak, she doubt even her village can bring the beast down without many casualty if they still exist. Only one Oni that she believe would be capable to defeat Hakugiai in one-on-one -on -one fight, and that Oni currently stand beside her, her big sister who crippled. Ram herself doesn't know how to respond to information that such powerful Oni exist. Make no mistake, she still don't like Eren but she doesn't believe that he is lying about this, why should he? There's nothing he gained by doing so, and she admit that he is powerful, and he has come from land that dubbed as land of gods. Is it a surprise that the Oni from there is also powerful? Of course no. She is not the worst though. Eren said, his voice slight dry as he recall what he know about the other Oni, Ibaraki is like what you said, she is barbarian, savage and vicious. Make no mistake, she is very good in warfare and know how to lead, but deep inside, you can find humanity in her. She behave like monster, but her emotion and heart is like a human, you can predict her action in the end. He stated, Shuten Duji, however, she is the worst. Worst? Amelia inquired, she leaned from her seat, apparently very taken by the tale. On contrary of many Oni, Shu Ten Duji behave very well-mannered. Eren told her, she is polite, kind, always speak with low and soft voice, smiling kindly, she even will offer you drink and pamper you if you polite enough with her. Despite the light and good description of the Oni, no one in the room make any comment, no one try to said that seems not bad or confused why the worst Oni behave so kindly and well-mannered and Eren continue. She is good girl, lovely even in appearance, like an angel in some way, her affection know no bounds. She would be more than willing to have sex with you, regardless your gender, if you respond to her loving care. That, managed to get reaction, at least from Amelia who has her face turned to red slightly. Apparently the lesson of, where baby come from, still fresh in her mind and it will never be forgotten by her. Then after she done with you, she will lay you on the bed then drink you wholly. Ram blinked, drink. Yup, drink, she literally drink your whole body. Aaron elaborated. Rem doesn't understand. Rem said with tilted head. Same here. Amelia added. Aaron crossed his arms in table and leaned slightly, have you ever heard the word, death by drunk of beauty, before? He asked rhetorically, because that was what happened when you meet Shu Ten Duji. Drunk of beauty? Rem quoted, what Aaron Sama mean? She asked. Aaron chuckled, a mixture of dry and grave voice laced in his small laughter, shoot Duji is beautiful, and I mean it, like really beautiful. She is so beautiful to the point it make people who see her drunk if she willing them to. Not just her appearance, her voice, her breath, her gaze, it make people drunk. So much to the point the alcohol that come out of nowhere she's near, that make them drunk, melted them down until nothing left. He explained, so by the time you done spending your time with her, you probably already only a bone and have your soul inside her stomach. 
The reaction is like what he expected, varied from disgust, this belonged to Puck and Beatrice, to horror, Amelia obviously, and mixture both of them, which come from Rem and Ram much to Aaron's slight confusion. And not just her, there's still many more monster like her lurking around. He continued at their silence, granted there also many heroes and good people in my place, but you get what I mean. He stare at Puck, Amelia and Rem in eyes directly, the thing that come out from a cookie eye, that was summoned through artifact of my world. The reaction was immediate. IT what? Puck and Amelia screamed simultaneously while Rem's body become rigid as if she was encased by an ice holy. Yeah, Aaron not surprised they react like this, giving just how. Vile, and, unnatural, the, Cthulhu's presence, even he would react like them if he were in their place. Even him who not sensitive to. Life's essence or something like that already can tell that, Cthulhu, is something that's so wrong, so out of context, it's like a horror given form, and a mere words can't describe just how bad it is. So he can't imagine how bad perhaps it was to Puck and Amelia. B-U-T-H-E-C-A-N-C-A-N-T-H-E a-f-t-e-r-a-l-l-h-e-a-l-r-e-a-d-y-w-e-n-t-t-h-r-o-u-g-h-s-o-m-e-t-h-i-n-g-t-h-a-t-w-o-r-s-e, fire breathed out from his nose that twisted and unfolded into a mockery of snout, teeth sharpened and fused together into gigantic serrated fangs that made blade look like a dull paper, fingers broke apart and turned into giant flaming claw, Laughter of mockery and cruelty resonated in the field as he saw the hopeless and horrified expression in those bugs' face. Aaron, are you serious? Amelia asked in utterly terrified voice, that thing. That thing come from? Aaron? She cut herself when notice her friend expression that turned to grimace for a moment. Ah. Aaron blinked, then he shook his head as he was in dream moment ago, sorry Emmy, what were you saying? Immediately know something was amiss with him, she decided to hold that topic for now and ask what more important, are you okay? You looks. Just having headache moment ago. She said with small pause as she also didn't know how to describe his condition. The blonde tilted his head and shoot her genuinely confused look, I did. He asked with small frown. By this time everyone also getting more focused to him and the topic about eldritch horror is, shockingly, forgotten for a moment as they stare at Aaron as well. For them that paying attention to him, since he's the one who tell the story, since the beginning, they noticed that moment ago he seems like just had something unpleasant crossed in his mind. But now after asked, he, himself also seems genuinely didn't know what just happened to him. Maybe I did. Aaron murmured, he seems oblivious to the stare he get, sorry Emmy, even mentioning that thing give me some headache. He said with small sigh. Well. That was not entirely unreasonable, after all, she also went through similar things. Whenever she tried to recall that. That monster appearance, she feel herself shudder and also get headache sometime. It as if remembering that monstrosity damaged her mind in some way, which is why she did not often try to remember or think about that monster. Fortunately she's not that much bothered when remember that monster, because when she did, she also remember warm and comforting light that surround her. Vision of family that she forgot and feeling that she truly loved by many people is there to remind her that despite their horrifying monster that threatened to swallow her she is never alone. But still. Aaron's reason. Somehow feels. I don't know what Pucky and the maid talking about, but even Betty can tell there's something obviously wrong with the world few weeks ago, I suppose. Beatrice commented as she stare at Aaron who grimaced again under her stare, and Betty is on different dimension, whatever malicious thing that born, it presence was enough to pierce the barrier. Which mean, whatever that coming, they shake the balance of this world by their mere existence, literally. Aaron blinked, surprised at Beatrice's lack of knowledge before he turned to Puck, you didn't tell her. About, Cthulhu, existence. That was what it called. Puck asked back, eyes twitching. What a strange and horrific name, then again considering just how. Outrageous that monster is perhaps it was fitting, and no, I didn't tell Beatrice about it. Why? Why? Do I even need to make a list of why I shouldn't tell someone about some abomination that just by mentioning it name make you get headache or went mad just by near it? Aaron opened his mouth to response but slowly close it when he thought about what the feline-like spirit said and the history of Cthulhu then close it. Puck is right, the less that know more about Cthulhu, the better it is. No need to add any more nightmare fuel to the re-zero verse. Yeah, you're right. He answered before turned to Beatrice, so Beatrice San, what do you know about our sudden departure to capital few weeks ago? Something about preventing Hakugiai that carrying those things. She wrinkled her nose in slight disgust when mentioning the horror from Prelatai's book, to the capital, and... 
She trailed off, her eyes widened slightly and she stared at Aaron with new expression. Aw. Oh. There's nothing but that emotion in her eyes, it's as if she just see him for the first time, as if she sees some kind of divine figure, it was expression that he has familiar with ever since he stepped into Castle of Lugnica. For some reason it disturbed Aaron, even more that now he know the real relationship of him and Beatrice, a contract that made by Echidna for both of them. Beatrice San. He called uncertainly, feeling uncomfortable under her stare. This make the librarian's spirit snap from her dazed state as she blinking olishly, are you okay? W.A. Her cheeks flushed slightly and she coughed to her fist, trying to regain her composure, Betty is fine, something just crossed in Betty's mind. She explained, you may continue. Sure. Aaron sure he's not the only one who stare at her but decide to move away from the topic since right now he also avoiding it as well, where was I before? He murmured. About how that thing is actually coming from your world. Amelia reminded, and this time their hint of distress and grim emotion in her face. Well. Not really, that thing, it actually did not come from mine or this world but. He briefly wonder what he should tell to them since he's also doesn't know much about Lovecraft lore only the basic but decide to be honest and said what he know, did you ever wonder, what exists out there? Out there? Amelia asked out where? Out from here. Aaron waved his hand to gesture his surrounding, from this world, from mine, from out of universe. No, really. The half-elf shook her head negatively, I don't think that's matter. Good. Aaron said bluntly, because something is better to left unknown, curiosity is good, but too much curiosity can bring disaster. He remember the quote of, ignorance is bliss, and while that is not entirely true, but it has some merit sometime, the people in my world. Some is not that content actually. They're always wondering, just what exists out there, just what kind of being that live in place where they can't reach. And once again everyone start to pay their attention to him, Beatrice seems even more than before for some reason, and Aaron feel himself smile inwardly, he's getting better into telling story like this and he continue. So they began to do their research, they began to experimenting, their intention is unknown to us. Perhaps they only try to being a noble, trying to find a new life, perhaps to get know them so they can work together and create something. Perhaps they are truly being bad and want to conquer or use those new life form for their uses but it doesn't matter, because in very first place it began from curiosity. So they decide to look back to history, they try to figure things, some that left behind and never be noticed. They explore and try to study it, and hey. They find some clue, then they try to connect it with the data that they have so far. Except it doesn't make any sense, it contradict almost everything, and it make them frustrated as they keep researching but find nothing in the end. And since things already gone for too long, they decide to, to hell with it, and start to connect it with something that forbidden. And then they see it was connected, a small piece of puzzle is gained and it bring joy to them. Then they began to think, perhaps there's another piece in another forbidden artifacts, or something across that line and thus they began to investigate all forbidden and thrown away grimoire that possibly related to it. And they stumble upon it. Amelia murmured, eyes wide as she leaned back in shock and horror, they find something about it. Not correct but not wrong either. Aaron said to her, what they found, is yes, there's something out there but thing is. It was pretty much dark for us and you can say they didn't manage to find anything since the place they looking for is too big and too vast, it's more like it found them. Frankly what he said about this was completely bullshit and not related to Lovecraft at all, maybe, but he sure it's not, but he decide that adding his own tail would be more interesting and acceptable than saying that human is only an ant species or something like that. He didn't need to worry about Puck's detection, he has learned about it after all but he decide to not thought about it since there's chance Puck could detect his real intention. So are you saying that? Out there, out of this world. Amelia's eyes briefly wandered to outside, to the sky specifically before return to him, there's thing like. Yes, but at same time. No. Aaron cut her, he know well where she going with her thought and it need to be stopped, Cthulhu come from world that unnatural and unfamiliar from us, but it doesn't mean he come from outer space. For all we could know there's something else from out here, and they could be benevolent one. He said, you can't judge others just because act of one after all. And that one true origin is still uncertain. Well. Amelia pressed her lips and she feel her shoulders lighten slightly. That was entirely correct, entire being can't be judged because of one. She can sympathize with that seeing her own condition. Not going to be that easy for me though. Puck thought grimly. He knew what Aaron trying to say, don't think too much about it since it is not our problem, it don't belong to this world or something like that but. Internally sighed, 
Puck decide to go with it since as much as he hate it, Aaron is right. It's not their problem and just thinking about it is bringing nothing but stress. Alright we get your point. Puck stated, there will be more of these beings come to this world, that's your point right? Yes. I told you this, because so can be prepared when the time come. Aaron confirmed. Artifacts from Land of Gods. Rem mused with interested face, this is truly sounds like story in the books. That seems click something in Amelia as her eyes widened and she look at Aaron with enlightened expression, could it be? Aaron blinked at the sudden shift of emotions in his friend's face, what? Aaron, you remember the prophecy? She asked, the last one about you. The pseudo saber's eyebrow twitched. How could he did not? That prophecy literally dooming him from being subtle after all. Yes. He answered. Then perhaps this is what it mean. Amelia said, she leaned forward and seems very enthusiast for some reason, you will stand behind the new king and lead Lugnica to new age. That's too vague, please be more specific. Aaron deadpanned. All right, all right. Here, you hail from land that's supposed to be land of gods, and you have knowledge about that place, right? True, but my knowledge is not that much to help this kingdom properly. But those objects that landed to this world, the artifacts, you know them right? He started to see where is this going. I know not many, but yes, I do know most of them. He is fans of Nasaverse after all, so he did know many noble phantasm and how they supposed to works. But the one that coming after his arrival in here is another matter. That's the purpose they come here perhaps. They're mean to be used. Maybe the great dragon want to start making Lugnica into kingdom that has those artifacts and bring it to prosperity. Not. Not entirely illogical, Gaia herself already told him that his purpose in here is to keep an eye so another case like Satella not repeated but. Presumptuous. He shoot down immediately, that's not how it works Emmy, stop that line of thinking. Amelia blinked, surprised at the sudden harshness her friend display, huh? What right do you have to assume those artifacts belong to Lugnica in very first place? That's not how it works. He said strictly, green eyes become sharper, you can't just claim them like that, what if those artifacts found someone proper that able to wield them? Are you going to take them away? That make the silver-haired girl's eyes widened, she staggered as if just slapped, that. That. I tell you before, those artifacts is not by any mean normal, each of them has very small degree of intelligence, and when they fall to the one that compatible, they would be bonded together. Aaron continued, and the only way to take them away after that? Is through their death. The half-elf recoiled at the words and she lowered her head, putting a shamed expression while clenching her fist, that wasn't what I mean. She muttered weakly. Aaron simply stare at him, he get where Amelia come from and what she trying to say, but that kind of thinking, that cannot be allowed. Yes, logically what she suggest is not bad idea, if one look through military view then securing these artifacts is indeed the best move, and the only one that aware of their existence is probably only them. Which mean they have the first start, a chance to improve the status of Lugnica and make it back to its prime condition. There's no way among those artifacts cannot be used for improving daily life of the people in this land. That kind of thinking however can lead to fanaticism, making someone can become hungry for power, and nothing good will come from that. Aaron know well how that would end, he had seen enough manga, movies, anime to see what it could cause. And Arthur's memory also give him experience that very close to real one. Briefly he glanced at Puck and found the feline-like spirit seems doesn't care much about their conversation but that was a lie. Puck's eyes also wander to Amelia's sullen form for a moment but he didn't make any comment surprisingly. Usually he going to chide me or support Emmy. Aaron thought as he pondering what in the spirit's mind but he decide to banish that away. He have something else to say after all, Emmy if you want to gather those artifacts. He called and make the half-elf snapped her eyes at him, gather them to keep an eye on them, not use them. That's must be what in your mind for the first time. What? But you said dash. Keeping an eye on them and uses them is two different things. Aaron cut her swiftly, you're true that having them in Lugnica will be beneficial if we can use them but please remember they are also a weapons, as matter of fact that is what they are. He explained once again, and having two powerful weapons is not always good things, you get what I'm trying to say right? Amelia doesn't talk for a moment, she merely put thoughtful face for a moment before slowly give nod to him. She know what he's trying to say, she has study about this after all about how having too much power can bring imbalance and greed. Even if the intention is good but that kind of things can lead to ruin in the end. Yes, I get it, thank you Aaron. She said in grateful voice and smile. Her friend is always there to help her, seriously, 
she owe him a lot. A powerful artifacts is indeed better to be keep on eye rather than used, Betty agree with that, I suppose. Beatrice commented while crossing her arms, unless one know how to use them properly, but if not, it's only going to spell doom to everyone. Rem agree with that. Rem chimed in with nod, Rem think using them without give much thought wouldn't be good too. It could make other nations targeting Lugnica. And given how Valachia already dislike us, that can be used as excuse to start war. Ram added while wrinkling her nose. Correct. Aaron nodded at them. His eyes briefly meet Ram's who only stare back at him nonchalantly but for some reason the blonde can feel their no usual heat or fire that the pink oni always held in her gaze. He clench his fist internally seeing this, damn that clown, even when he's not with them but that leech still make him upset somehow. We should tell this to others. Aaron turned to Amelia after she said that, his eyebrow narrowed slightly, why so? Because it's related to Lugnica as well. Amelia said, that. That artifact, one that used to summon. She grimaced in here, it's clear which one she's speaking about, that's happened because the kingdom unaware of its existence. There's no warning about it. And it could happen again. I will suggest you to not tell any of royal candidate. Aaron said after moment of silent, I can tolerate if it's crush san or felt, but Anastasia san and Priscilla? Yeah no, Anastasia going to look for one obviously, Priscilla probably going to do same thing too. So no, those two cannot know. Amelia seems also have similar thought as she grimace a bit, okay, how about Miklatov sama then? Good enough I suppose. Aaron nodded slowly as he remember the old man that helped them. He can be trusted and be subtle at least, that man could help them with this. I will write letter to him. Amelia beamed, seems happy her idea approved. You do that now then. Aaron hummed, is there any question? And Emmy, about that particular topic. He added when notice the girl open her mouth, we should talk about it in private. He give her look in here, sharp enough to be obvious. He knew she want to talk about Roswell but not in here, not in front of everyone. Later perhaps when their chance he will tell them as well but not now. Amelia caught his looks and nodded, at least understand what he trying to say. Meanwhile Rem glanced at the duo with curious expression, her gaze then settled to Aaron finally but she didn't make any comment. Anyway, I guess that's all what I want to talk about. Aaron said before he blinked and remember something, oh, one more things. Is there someone in here can teach me magic? That brought surprise expression from Amelia and Rem, even Puck and Beatrice also stare at him. Teach you magic? Beatrice asked rhetorically, and why you want to learn that? Aren't you already busy enough with your sword training? And that training is more like throwing mana carelessly than wielding sword. Ouch, that was hurt, true it's more like controlling his mana than blade but... Hey, it's still a training that related to sword. I just thinking that magic might be useful in some occasions. Aaron said, I never get trained about magic since my mana is powerful enough but there were time I found I wish I could use one. Like battling against Hakugiai in the witch's cult, magic can be very useful rather than only swinging sword and launching tornado. True, I suppose. Beatrice agreed with pursed lips, very well then, what do you know about magic and using them? Well. His mind briefly recall how to use magecraft in type moon and he copying it, channeling the mana inside him and extend one palm, I guess I can use this. H.E. close his eyes, digging his memory further and try to use spell that Irisville had in her servant form, a simple light beam or make his hand glow and... Amelia let out yelp as Aaron's form suddenly explode, it wasn't big to swallow them but loud enough to make everyone jumped in surprise, even Beatrice let out squeak that rather loud. Aaron Sama. Rem called in shock. Aaron. Amelia immediately stood with worried face as she watched the smoke that cover him, Aaron are you okay? Before Rem or her can approach him, the smoke slowly waved away, revealing Aaron who appeared to be unharmed apparently while coughing and waving his hand in attempt to usher away the smoke. Same thing can't be said to his cloths though as the upper part utterly destroyed, leaving his torso bare naked to everyone. I'm cough fine. He said as he tried to breath through the dissipated smoke, that was. He take deep breath and exhale them slowly, well, that was not how I expect my magic will come out. Beatrice's eyebrow twitching while Puck explode into laugh. The petite spirit cross her arms and shoot look to him, you have no experience at all. She commented, well that's to be expected, I suppose. With all mana you have, controlling them to produce spell would be hard. Perhaps so. Aaron frowned a bit as he stare at his hand. That was not supposed to happen, he follow Irisville's memory so why? Is it has something to do with Dragonheart? 
his own magic resistant hinder him. No, that's not how magic from Nasaverse works. But he's not in Nasaverse now isn't he? Damn, one wall after another. Aaron cursed internally. After you talk with her come to Betty's library. The blonde snapped toward the small girl with a speed that make his neck look broken for a moment. Pardon? He asked in utter disbelief. Betty will teach you magic, I suppose. It's better if that power controlled or you will blow the entire mansion. Beatrice said plainly as she hopped down from her chair and walked to the door, she stopped when pulling the knob and turned to him once again, come after you finish your talk with that girl. She told him before open the door which reveal part of her library and enter it, leaving from the room. Then Puck also start to fly and follow his fellow spirit, he turned to Aaron as well, I also want to talk with you, I will be waiting with Beatrice. He said as he also make his exist. They're silent in the group, Aaron particularly who stare at where Beatrice before. Then he walked to the nearby window and stare at the sky with deep look. No sign of rain of fire today. He said with grim voice, maybe Beatrice Sen eat something strange this morning. He murmured and he turned to Rem, Rem, did you let Beatrice Sen eat Rem's cooking this morning? The pink oni's eyebrow twitched in irritation but she didn't make any single comment and merely walk away, also leaving the room. Rem smiled kindly to him, no Aaron Sama, Beatrice Sama eat Rem's cooking this morning. Well then. Aaron rubbed his chin, what make Beatrice willing and volunteering to teach him magic? Hey Aaron, could you please cover yourself? Amelia asked with face a bit red as she stare at the man's naked torso, I, I mean, you could get cold if you not wearing anything. What? Aaron asked in blank voice. The sun is high in sky and the room is also warm enough, so how he will get cold? He shook his head and decide to not answer that question, he have a guess frankly but he not going to touch that topic, right, anyway come to meet me in my room in next 15 minutes, we will talk there. Can Rem join? Rem asked, Rem is fine with only watching Amelia Sama and Aaron Sama doing it. Aaron paused in middle of his walk and stare at Rem, face utterly flat, Rem, no. Doing it? Amelia blinked, doing what? None of your concern and Rem, no. Aaron replied to Amelia while still looking at Rem who smiled in amusement, it's not funny. In response of that Rem's smile merely widened. It is. Rem said, after all, Rem want to know why Aaron Sama seems so know so much about the Oni that called Shu Ten Duji. Fuck. True. Amelia turned to him as well, there's some gleam in her eyes this time, strange one but eerily familiar, I also want to know Aaron. Double fuck. Somewhere else. The security is a bit tight, more than I expected. She muttered before she let out sigh, honestly, this is the fifth base we raid and yet, they still don't want to speak or have solid information for us. The King of Gustico will come to here, it shouldn't be a surprise. Her partner replied, not to mention the kingdom also unwilling to let other kingdoms to have chance to get close with the dragon's descendant. True. She agreed while pushing her lips while palming her chin, but I never thought that even their underworld also unwilling to cooperate and let us in. Her eyes briefly shifted to the death bodies that surround them before set back to her current ally. That also can't be blamed. As much as they didn't give much love to this kingdom but it's still theirs. The safety of the dragon's descendant is their top priority since this is where they live, which will make this land become prosper once again. Elsa quirked her eyebrow to the man who cleaning his swords, her lips curled to amused smirk, you seems know quite a lot about things like this. Politic you mean? He asked while quirking his eyebrow back to her, as hired killer, it's just logical to know about it. It was in our job as well. True. She nodded, assassin mainly hired through those that meddle in politic after all, but you are new. You just become known and active for few months and yet, you seems have a lot of experience. Oh. The man eyes narrowed and he shifted slightly, what make you think that I only active for that long? Please. Elsa rolled her eyes, you're underestimating our network, executor, dot. She said the epithet with amused voice, you are skilled and strong, I admit that. His skills that he showed during their short time together already proof that the rumor about him wasn't exaggerated, in fact they might be not complete at all, the man still hide many of his abilities, that she can tell, but if someone like you has active for very long then you would make quite impact and be more famous than now. And now who underestimating who? Executor shoot back nonchalantly, for all you know perhaps I'm so skilled to the point I only being known right now just because I want to. There's some point in there but that was very unlikely. Elsa replied easily, for one, if you're as skilled as you claim then, by now you already have a way to get what we want. 
because you probably have very strong connection or some information, we wouldn't be here and raiding one after another base. There's no way someone as skilled as you spoke of would only limit yourself in Kararaji. It was logical and very astute deduction, if Executor is truly have such tremendous skill then he wouldn't have problem to enter the Dragon Kingdom, yet here they are now, still not managed to get any single clue of the information they want after three days in Lugnica. People always seek power and influence, that was true. Executor said with grunt as he get what the vampire tried to say, but sometime they seek something else. So you implying that you only get active recently because of something? Elsa asked in amused and intrigued voice, my, my, what a interesting objects. Care to share what it is? The nonchalant and relaxed emotions gone from Executor's eyes, the golden orbs narrowed sharply and he glared to her. Careful leech. He spoke, voice chilling yet remain calm, we are merely ally because we have same target, other than that there's nothing between us, and it was you who seek my help in very first place. He tilt his eyes and his fingers twitched, if you keep annoying me, I will be more than happy to end your pitiful existence. Instead of feeling afraid from the threat, Elsa merely shudder with ecstatic expression, my, my, already ask for my hand? What a gentleman you are. I will be asking more than that, Lamprey. She let out laugh at that reply, appear to be not offended slightly by the insult. Shaking her head, she walked toward the nearest table and pull out scroll from the bag that she carry. All right, all right, Mr. Grumpy. She chuckled, let's talk about something else. Before she can continue though the door near them swung open and both killer turned to see familiar person enter the room. Girl that not older than 13 years old perhaps, with blue hair that braided and clad in simple dark dress. You wah this place is stink. The girl complained as she stared at the room that littered by corpse and blood, I shouldn't expect much, Elsa is here after all. Hey now. Elsa seems appear to be offended by the comment, I will have you know that I am very hygienic person. Hygienic for vampire maybe. The small girl replied in dry but cheerful voice anyway, I already did my job. I make everything around looks like a salt of demonic beast. Good job Meili. The death of Hakugiai while is good things but it also has some downcast as well. Hakugiai was big predator and thus usually it ate almost everything, including it fellow demonic beast. Because of that, there's small advantage that the beast roaming around the world as it reduced the numbers of the demonic beasts that exist. And because of it demise, it caused the population of demonic beast to be disturbed. Those that usually flee or get away from Hakugiai's wandering place decide to inhabit those area, fighting for territories and preying upon those that near them as well. Thus it wasn't a surprise if some place found it to be destroyed because of assault from demonic beast, something that beneficial for the assassins due to Meili's ability to tame demonic beast and make it looks like an accident. So this place also has nothing then? The demonic beast tamer asked. Unfortunately, yes. Elsa sighed, not just that, but it also doesn't give us clue any new base other than what we have. She added with lamenting voice. Normally she wouldn't be annoyed too much, she's a person who enjoying her job after all, and she like killing people and bask in their blood and bowels, but right now? Not so much. She already patient enough to wait for few months to assault her target and now she is this close, well, since this place proved to be empty like the last three then our next destination is Dash. You wouldn't get what you want from another base. The three assassins immediately spun from where they stand, two of them, Elsa and Executor, instantly draw out their dagger and sword before throw it to the direction of the voice that spoke. Sounds of steels clashing against each other echoed in the dark room that illuminated only by few candles. The thrown weapons was repelled away and went to either sides of the speaker who slowly come out from the shadow. The figure is one that belonged to female. Petite but not enough to be considered small. She clad in dark armor with menacing style that has several parts, in shoulders, elbow, and toes, that protruding like a blade's. Even the gauntlet has claws on the tip rather than simple one, it almost look like armor that suit for some kind of demon than human. Behind her horned helmet, pale blue eyes glowing and flickering like a flame that burning, they shifted from Elsa to her companion one by one. I'm not your enemy. She stated plainly, if I'm one, I wouldn't show myself to you all. She tilted her head slightly, and don't bother to pretend you did, none of you detect my presence since beginning after all. Oh. Elsa quirk her eyebrow and place one hand on her hip, her dagger still clutch in there, and who might you be then? Let's just say, I'm your ally for now. You can call me Cecil. Cecil introduce herself, you want to target the dragon's descendant, Aaron Pendragon, correct? Why yes, yes, my dear. Elsa answered happily, do you have some way to help us? Cecil didn't spoke, she merely stared at her, then to Meili, 
and then to executor. Finally her gaze returned to the vampire, you three won't stand a chance against him. Oh really? Elsa asked in amused voice. The first time you fought him, he was inexperienced and barely know how to swing sword properly, yet you still cannot defeat him. The amusement in the serial killer's face slowly gone, her eyes narrowed sharply as she start to take this woman more serious now. How could she know about their fight? Granted the news of her defeat was not secret thanks to that boy blabber his mouth but no one, save for the half-elf and her spirit, know that the boy is weak in reality. She was there then. But how she was remained undetected in there. I'm not even serious at that time. That was true, she was only playing around when fought against him. Yes, she did went berserk at that time and the boy did show he have some good instinct and reflex, but he only survived thanks to his sword and that spirit. You should be. Cecil spoke coldly, he is powerful now, his skills might still not able to match yours, but it already good enough. And with his raw strength, even three of you won't be able to kill him. You're exaggerating. Elsa curled her lips in distaste, while it's true that I heard rumor and words about his power, but it only come from his sword. She had seen the result of the battle against Hakugiai, destructive doesn't even begin just how much it was. Until now the land still scarred from the tremendous attack that boy did, a real proof that the sword he hold is something on another level. And do you think such sword would allow itself to be wielded freely by a weakling? Cecil asked again, no, Eren Pendragon has become one of the strongest being in Lugnica. Even the sword demon in his prime would having some difficulty to bring him down. And how do you know that? Executor asked sharply, ignoring about everything you say, how we could even trust you in very first place. Because I'm your only lead. Cecil answered, if you want to caught Aaron Pendragon guard then your best chance is to work with me. No one in this kingdom will help you to ambush him. Sneaking to the kingdom truthfully isn't hard for people like Elsa and her friends. Despite the increase of security and guards, they still manage to get in, they are that skilled after all. However what problematic is that no one want to speak or give them the information regarding their targets. Of course not all of them was so tight-lipped about it, however those that speaks doesn't offer much information. It seems their higher know who's can be trusted and one that can't. It was very shocking that the thieves in the Lugnica is very loyal to someone who they barely know and only seen for few times. Those thieves is not stupid, not the one that in high place. Cecil continued, they know that Lugnica is on the edge. Despite this place is still holding itself but it's not enough, it only matter of time before Lugnica brought down, and it would be bad for them as well. If Lugnica down then there will be change, massive change, and their partner or co-worker might not be cooperative or willing like their current position. However if Lugnica return to it prosper state, then it's very good thing for them, they already have connection and trustworthy allies, they will be able to gain profit and benefit as well in the end. Granted there's also bad side of it, perhaps Aaron Pendragon truly could shake Lugnica's underworld system and obliterate them completely but at least they could predict their move and it also less troublesome than dealing with foreigner or new partner. So they decide to protect Aaron Pendragon. For now at least and let the man do his job, see where it will lead them. Well, you're not completely wrong in that part and it sounds reasonable too but what? Elsa purposely trailed off and twirled the dagger in her hand, her finger tracing the edge almost in sensual manner as she leered at Cecil, stopping us from pulling that information straight out from your head and open your innards so I can see your beautiful bowel? She asked in sweet voice. You certainly can try but you will fail. Cecil replied in monotone, and know that after this, I won't approach you anymore, there are no second chance for me, you can resume your, pointless, chase, and when you manage to get what you want from them, it will be too late, Aaron Pendragon will be very guarded and more than ready to welcome you. Hate to admit it, but this girl has a point. Elsa perfectly aware that Aaron Pendragon is more like a strategist than fighter, he is keen person, at what level she didn't know but their first encounter when he stall her purposely and know how to get under someone's skin is more than enough that he know how to use plan properly. She never thought that he will be very guarded like this by Lugnica's underworld and the boy not even aware of it, if he did then hunting him will become harder and chance it could attract potential rival. However. You seems pretty confident you can take us on. Elsa giggled as she twirled her dagger, her eyes briefly flashed red before return to normal, while I admit that you have a point but that will only work if you can get out from us. Too many things that unknown and risky, there's no guarantee that this girl will let them ambush Aaron Pendragon, for all they know she could lead them to trap instead and she's not in mood to prolong this mouse and cat game any further. It will be better to pluck the information out from her brain, more less troublesome, more reassuring, and of course more fun. On contrary, torturing her won't give us any result. 
It was surprisingly Executor that spoke, making Mei Li and Elsa turn to him who keep staring at Cecil with sharp eyes. After all, you're not even alive to begin with. Executor stated in matter-of-fact tone. The vampire's eyes widened and she snapped her gaze back to the black armored woman, briefly her pupil turned to slit and her beautiful face marred by deep scowl. Another vampire? She almost growled. So that's why this girl want to help them. She also after Aaron Pendragon's blood. Her grip to her dagger tightened and her legs shifted slightly, there's no way she will let this woman get her hands on Aaron Pendragon, he is hers, only hers. She will not share him with another no matter what. This is not her first time having scuffle with her fellow vampire, and the fact she still stand right here and now proof that she's the one who survived. This girl will only be another victim in her list. No, she's not like you. Executor said, she's more like a puppet, dead body that controlled by strings. Their brief silence after he said that as the assassins stare at the black armored girl that only look back to them, they can't see her face due to the helmet but for some reason they can tell she is amused. How sharp of you. Cecil chuckled, I don't know how you notice it but you're right. I'm nothing but a puppet, my real master is in somewhere else. She admitted, that is why I said that there won't be any use to kill me, you can torture or cut me into pieces but you won't get anything from me, dead people speak no tales after all. I oppose that exclamation. Elsa chimed with small smirk, she feel relaxed slightly that the one who stood before her is not fellow vampire. Yes, the master could be vampire but that is problem for later, now though. You do realize admitting that just make us more suspicious to you, right? Obviously. Cecil shrugged nonchalantly, but I do get your interest right? She said while gazing at executor who narrowing his eyes in sharp manner. The killer stare at the doll with grim expression, his golden eyes filled with disdain for a brief moment before he let out small grunt. You can join us. Executor said. Hey. Meili let out small whine, who said you can decide for us? She asked with pout. It's okay Meili. Elsa assured her little sister with smile before she turned to Executor, I think I know why you made that decision and I will play along. She said in sing-song voice then she turned to Cecil, but if you dare to cross us. That will not happen. Cecil replied firmly, I will help you to reach Aaron Pendragon, that I promise. She turned to Executor, and of course, for you to reach that half-elf. That draw surprised look from Elsa as she glanced at her ally, she never thought that he would. My, my, so you after the half-elf. She said in mixture of surprise and curiosity, never expect that you will chase such girl. Is it because of her heritage? Executor only silent and didn't reply, choosing to walk away instead, passing through the black armored woman without any words. Elsa pouted slightly, she didn't expect an answer in first place since she have some idea what kind of person he is even if they only together for short time, but to not even look at her. How rude. It's not her heritage the reason why he chase after that half-elf. Cecil surprisingly the one that answered for him, even if they didn't know each other, after all, if my circumstance is different, I would after her too. Oh. Elsa's eyebrow quirked in interest, then mine to tell me what is the reason. It's simple, really. Image of silver-haired woman with violet and black void eyes with deranged smile flashed in the black armored woman's mind, after all, if you know someone going to end the world. She trailed off as she spun around, her red cape fluttering as she walked to follow where executor leaving, you will kill them to prevent it from happening. Crossover o make with modern heroes, fate slash grand order slash multicross mass si round robin, bar of heroes. Aaron blinked as he found himself stand in middle of green field. It was strange, one moment he closed his eyes and then. Poof, here he is now. The hell is happening? He asked internally, his sleeping outfit disposed and he wore his armor in instant with Excalibur ready any time to answer his call. He stared at his surrounding. It was. Peaceful places. A field full of green, followed by wind that blow gently, the smell of this place also pleasant, their various flowers littered around the field, making them look more beautiful and serene. It's very nice. He murmured, smile adorn his face as he stare at the place. For some reason this place carry familiar aura, one that bring nostalgia. It's. It's almost like a. A home. That word struck him in the core and brought deep sadness. A home. How long has it been since he. His expression suddenly set back to where he won and he shook his head a bit. Not good, can't lost focus now no matter how good this place is. He began to walk, looking around the field. Why he's here? What bring him here? Is this guy is doing? 
He paused when he found something odd in middle of the green field. A building. A honest big, modern, and very well-made building. In place that's surrounded by green and flowers. Whoever made this must be can't read atmosphere very well. Aaron thought dully as he stared at the tall building. Should he enter or skip it? It could be a death trap, a building that stood out alone in middle of field that mysterious, that is very cliché in horror movie. Common sense to tell me that I should skip this place lest I got dragged into a madness but... Aaron sighed and rubbed his temple as he start walking to the building. For some reason he feels this place will be fine, and it holds some familiarity too. He entered the building carefully, opening the door and granted by impressive sight. The main hall is designed greatly and very neat, tables and chair placed carefully, a stage that has good style in middle, and rather large bar in corner. This is quite good place. He thought as he start to explore the place, eyes looking from one to another objects. He briefly touched the table and chairs, feeling them and approached the stage, their various music instruments in there such as violin, piano, etc, etc. Whoever made this place while seems a bit bad reading the atmosphere but Aaron must admit, they truly could build something. Finally he approached the bar, noticing their many bottles and drinks in the cabinet, all of them look very high class and would taste good no doubt. And then counter guardian EMIYA come out from the bar. Welcome to Avalon Bar. EMIYA greeted while clad in bartender outfit. The white-haired archer took one look at him and blinked before he smiled a bit, ah, Arthur, welcome back. Decide to take a small rest? What? Aaron asked in blank voice, mind still numb from seeing a motherfucking EMIYA come out of nowhere. EMIYA roll his eyes almost in good-natured manner, what with that face? You look like just CSCP, 3883 start dancing. A what? Anyway, take a seat, I will prepare your usual. EMIYA said as he gestured to the seat and went back to inside the bar. Aaron stared, stared and stared as he trying to understand just what in name of Akasha, Root, Pain, Kagaya, and fucking Kratos just happened. Sounds of door opened broken him out from his stupor as he turned and see someone enter the hall. The person happened to be a young woman with violet hair and eyes, she clad in a blue outfit that looks like those he has seen in Indian films he used to YA it a minute. Sakura Matu. He blurted out with blink. True he never see Sakura Matu in real life and only in anime but this woman appearance truly resemble her so much. What more surprising though he can sense it. The power this woman hold within her, vast, big, tune in perfectly with nature and majestic. It's eerily similar like. Divine spirit or a goddess, Gaia. His hand unconsciously twitch, fingers flexed and ready to call Excalibur in case things happened. The goddess hummed merrily while enter the place and she turned to him, their eyes meet and her violets orb brightened in instant. Arthur. She called aloud happily, walking to him and then. Pouncing at him. He immediately step aside, avoiding the goddess that lunged at him, making her crash to the ground with loud yelp, face meet floor first and landed almost in epic faceplant position. Oh ee. She mumbled out in pain through the floor. She then rose, eyes watering and stare at him with pouting expression, why didn't you catch me? She demanded angrily. Who the hell greeting someone by jumping at them? Aaron shoot back with twitching eyebrow, especially to stranger to boot. He added. Stranger. That's mean. She replied with huff as she stand and brush her cloths, that was Eric wasn't it? There's no way Arthur won't catch me. Eric, is that how you behave to woman? Eric? He asked in befuddlement, who in name of Root is Dash? The door opened again, making the duo turn and stare at the newcomer, a person who garbed in nothing but plain white tunic while having long green hair. Aaron feel his breath stop a moment. He recognized this being, only one servant who didn't garbed in armor or complex cloths in Nasiverse. The only friend of King of Heroes, the Chain of Heaven, Enkidu. The goddess brightened more when see the newcomer, face beaming with smile, Kiki. She greeted while wave her hand happily to him. Enkidu quirk his eyebrow and reply to her with polite and soft smile, Hello Lady Parvati. He greeted, then his eyes fell on him, Hello AR. The smile slowly gone. Well. Shit. Aaron thought as he flex his fingers, that was not a good sign. It can't be. Enkidu murmured wide eyes, then his expression suddenly shifted to stoic one. Kiki. Parvati blinked taken back by the sudden expression of her friend. Lady Parvati stay away from that man. Enkidu stated stoically as he start to walk slowly and carefully to them, his eyes never leave from him, as if he going to attack them. What? 
Kiki, what are you doing? Parvati stood in front of him with frown, taking protective stance, Eric and Dash. That's not Eric and our Arthur. Enkidu interjected firmly, steps away from him, now. The goddess eyes widened and then she turned to him, her shocked face slowly also move into wariness as she did what her weapon told her to. Her stance slowly shifted as well, filled with preparation and sharpness that weren't there before. Fuck. Aaron thought with dread internally. He's confident in himself but facing against Enkidu is equal to suicidal, even the original Arthur won't be able to beat him. And not just that, he now also have a goddess to worry about. Why in name of gods he decide to enter this place again? Here is your usual Arthur and what's going on here? Emiya cut himself and asked the question when he come out and noticed the tension in the bar. No one answer his question though, Parvati and Enkidu stare at Aaron who look back at them, the pseudo saber's face is stolid and show no emotion despite internally he's panicking. Then Enkidu spoke. Tell me Aaron Wilson. Enkidu said aloud, making the blonde's eyes widen that the servant know his real name, how did you get in here? If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.